Voyager 1 began its epic journey long ago, it launched from Earth in September 1977. The spacecraft first aimed for giant planets. Jupiter and Saturn were its initial destinations. It showed us these worlds like never before. Voyager 1 was a true pioneer, a pathfinder, it pushed the boundaries of our knowledge, its cameras sent back breathtaking images. After its planetary encounters its mission grew. Voyager 1 ventured further into the unknown. In August 2012 it achieved something remarkable. It crossed into interstellar space, the space between stars. This was a monumental first for humanity. No other spacecraft had ever gone so far. It became our first true interstellar messenger. It now sails in an ocean of cosmic rays, exploring a realm previously only theorized. As of now in May 2025 it is incredibly far. Voyager 1 is over 15 and a half billion miles from us. Light itself takes over 23 hours to travel that far. A message travels for almost a day. It speeds along at roughly 35,000 miles per hour. Voyager 1 holds a unique title. It is the most distant object made by human hands, a silent wanderer on an infinite voyage. To understand Voyager 1's recent challenge, we look at its thrusters. These small engines are crucial for the spacecraft. They help Voyager 1 point itself correctly. This orientation is vital for one main reason. Its antenna must aim precisely at Earth. If it cannot point correctly we lose contact, it cannot send us its precious data from afar, nor can we send it new commands easily, these thrusters are its link to home. The problem began with the thrusters currently in use, these were actually the spacecraft's backup set. The original primary thrusters had issues years ago, so NASA switched to this backup system, but recently these backup thrusters showed signs of wear. Engineers noticed a concerning buildup of residue. This residue came from the propellant they use. It was like a slow clogging of tiny pipes. A gradual degradation, far from any mechanic. The team watched this with growing concern. This residue buildup posed a serious risk. The thrusters risked becoming completely clogged. If they clogged, they would eventually fail. NASA projected this failure could happen soon. The mission itself would be in grave jeopardy. A critical piece of this unfolding drama is on Earth. It is a giant antenna in Australia. This is Deep Space Station 43, or DSS-43. It is located near Canberra, the Australian capital. DSS-43 is part of NASA's Deep Space Network. This network allows us to talk to distant spacecraft. It is our lifeline to probes across the solar system. And for Voyager 1, DSS-43 is uniquely important. It plays a role no other antenna can. A giant ear listening to whispers from the void, DSS-43 is the only antenna on our planet capable of sending commands to Voyager 1. Its powerful transmitter can reach across billions of miles. Other antennas can listen but DSS-43 can talk. This makes it indispensable for controlling the spacecraft, especially for complex or urgent instructions. Without it we are severely limited in guiding Voyager 1. This reliance created a ticking clock for the team. The urgency was amplified by upcoming plans for DSS-43. This vital antenna was scheduled for major upgrades. These upgrades are necessary for future space missions. However, such extensive work means downtime. DSS-43 would be largely unavailable for many months. Let us delve deeper into those silent original thrusters. These were the spacecraft's primary roll thrusters, designed to be the main system for orientation. But, as mentioned, they stopped working in 2004. For over 20 years, they remained inactive a silent component on a distant aging spacecraft. Most had likely written them off as permanently lost. Their failure was a known issue, logged and filed away. The spacecraft was old and some failures were expected, but now, these dormant thrusters were Voyager's best hope. The reason for their 2004 failure was specific. Their internal heaters had lost their power supply. These heaters are not for comfort in cold space. They serve a critical engineering purpose for thrusters. They keep the propellant lines and valves warm. This prevents fuel from freezing or behaving unpredictably. Cold thrusters can lead to dangerous pressure spikes, or they might not fire reliably or at all. So, without working heaters, the thrusters were unusable. A power glitch had silenced a key system. Engineers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory JPL, pondered this. They dug into the old data from 2004. They formed a hypothesis about what went wrong. It opened a tiny sliver of possibility for a fix. The JPL engineers devised a daring plan. It was a long shot, filled with uncertainty. Their idea was to try and reactivate the old thrusters, the ones that had been silent since 2004. The plan involved sending a complex series of commands. 
These commands would instruct Voyager 1 to switch, to switch back to its original primary roll thrusters. The main hurdle was the heater problem. The crucial part of the plan was to try and restart the heaters. If the engineer's hypothesis about the power circuit was correct, perhaps a new command sequence could reset it or find an alternate path for the electricity. They hoped to coax the power back to those cold heaters. This was the linchpin of the entire revival attempt. Without working heaters, firing the thrusters was too risky. It was an attempt to fix a two-decade-old hardware problem with software commands sent across billions of miles. A truly remote repair job, on an unprecedented scale. After sending the commands on March 19th, the wait began. It was a tense period for the entire Voyager team. They had to wait for the signals to traverse the vast distance, a round trip for light exceeding 46 hours. Imagine the anticipation, the nervous energy at JPL, each passing hour stretched out, filled with hope and doubt. They were listening for a whisper from interstellar space, a sign that their long-shot plan had worked. Finally, the data began to arrive. It was March 20, 2025, over 23 hours after the commands reached Voyager 1. Telemetry streamed back to Earth carrying the spacecraft's status. Engineers eagerly scanned the incoming information. They were looking for specific telltale signs, signs that the heaters for the original thrusters were alive, and then, they saw it. The data was clear, the test had been a resounding success. A wave of relief and elation swept through the control room, their daring plan had paid off spectacularly. The key evidence came from temperature readings. The data showed a dramatic temperature rise in the thruster heaters. These heaters, cold for two decades, were warming up. This indicated they were receiving power and were operational. Voyager 1's original main thrusters were back online. The revival of these dormant thrusters is incredibly significant. It is not just a clever piece of engineering. It directly ensures Voyager 1 can continue its historic mission. The primary function of these thrusters is orientation. They allow the spacecraft to keep its main antenna pointed at Earth. This is the lifeline for all communication. Without this precise pointing, data cannot be sent or received. The mission would effectively become silent, lost in the void. These revived thrusters are now the guardians of that vital link. They ensure Voyager 1 can keep talking to us. This fix was especially crucial given the timing. Remember the Deep Space Station 43 in Canberra, its impending upgrade and long unavailability period? That blackout was due to start in early May 2025. If the thruster problem had not been solved by then, Voyager 1 might have lost its orientation during the blackout. With DSS-43 offline, correcting it would have been extremely difficult. The revived thrusters provide stability and control. They allow Voyager 1 to navigate this silent period safely. The successful thruster revival brought immense joy to the NASA team. It was more than just a technical victory. It was an emotional moment for those who nurture these distant explorers. Todd Barber, the propulsion lead, called it a glorious moment. He highlighted the team's high morale, stating, these thrusters were considered dead. Imagine the feeling of resurrecting a vital part of this historic mission, a part that had been silent for 21 years. It speaks to the deep connection engineers feel with their creations, especially one as iconic and far-reaching as Voyager 1. Their dedication keeps the dream of interstellar exploration alive. Kareem Badarudin, the Voyager mission manager, shared similar sentiments. He reflected on the spacecraft's unexpected and remarkable longevity. Voyager 1 was designed for a shorter mission to Jupiter and Saturn. Yet here it is, nearly 50 years later, still pushing boundaries. Badarudin noted that the team had previously accepted the 2004 thruster failure. They had a backup, so it was a manageable loss at the time. But to now reclaim that original capability is extraordinary.